When did you realize that hard work does not always pay off? When they reward you for getting your work done well, by giving you everyone else's work to do. Pretty much every job I've had, I feel this in my soul. Even better when your boss rewards you with bits of their work, and positions it as a great learning opportunity. Yes. Please let me do the bitch work parts of your job while getting paid dollar sign 45k less per year. I guess that's why they get paid so much. They've implemented creative strategies for cost savings and efficiencies. Oh my god my boss is rewarding me with his work currently. Look how generous I'm letting you do this. This will be great experience for you. My boss did that for each member of our department. And then dropped hints on how to make it sound like a regular responsibility on our resumes. I never ever called off. And yes. I understand now why that is not a good thing. But when I was young I thought you went to work. Unless you were on your death At a staff meeting. Boss was reading everyone the riot act for calling off too much. And his second in charge said well. Except for backslash backslash vertical parachute backslash backslash. They've never missed a day. Boss said m- Really? I never noticed. Lesson learned. Had a co-worker who never missed time. Always did ot and did what was expected. Semi-annual performance reviews came through and he got a 4 out of 5 on attendance. I.e. No one was allowed to score 5 over 5. No one gets top score because some MBA thinks that will keep them motivated to work harder next time. Yup. The wondrous minds of out of touch manager Emrant. Backslash backslash, out of touch management like wet water. Effective management is a bane of modern corporate and, by extension, modern capitalism. Most of the times, they either do nothing, or screw shit up for no reasons other than feel validated. The first time I had a real job, turns out that working harder than your coworkers does not impress them. This, working harder usually just results in you being given more work and responsibilities. That you either have to fit into the same hours with the same wage, or into unpaid overtime. I honestly wish that that had been my outcome. Instead, I was just straight up disliked, and eventually pushed out of the position. This happened at least twice. I've had this happen too, but assumed it was because I didn't want to talk about the same things they did. I was terribly bored so did my best to keep busy while everyone else gossiped. They hated me, but I understand now it was probably because I worked harder. These were the types to get so mad at me for being on my computer after they came back from a smoke break. You get a smoke break, I get a break to then write. Double standards all over the place. It was really just a shifty work environment. This is why I resent any time I work with smokers. Not them personally, but the consistent double standard of why are you on your phone slash non-work web bitch slash taking a call when I have a spare moment, but they can chat slash smoke for 10 to 15 minutes multiple times a day. The double standard is real and it's pathetic. At my old job, if any other employees would go outside and smoke I just went to my locker and got a little jug of bubbles and went outside with them and blew bubbles. I did this for 9 months before the plant manager caught on lol. Boss man was too busy watching tennis and golf in his office to catch on to quick. Easily retail. Those performance based raises are deliberately rigged to not give people the best raises. I only really understood how much when I became a manager and was overruled on how much to give my employees a raise when I gave them a 5 over 5. I was told. And I quote. No one is a 5 over 5 she came in whenever we called. Stayed late whenever we needed was the epitome of the perfect employee, and was well loved by everyone that shopped there. They changed her evaluation from a 5 over 5 which was I believe a 50 ish cent raise, still not enough, to a 3 fifths which was a 10 cent raise. She quit a few weeks after I told her and no one we've hired has been half as productive as she was. I find it super interesting that companies don't realize that it's better to pay someone 20% more that works as hard as two people than to hire two people. They are stupid. 99% companies doesn't understand that one happy employee do a better job than two unhappy. It's not just the measurable job performance. It's reflected in the customer experience. There's a retailer near me that treats their staff very well and actually staffs adequately. You can always find help, and the staff are always helpful. Oh find someone that is. 
because the staff stick around and actually want to be there. Worked this office job for 9 years. Ever since I turned 16. They kept giving me responsibilities. Never any pay raise beyond the minimum they had to. All the while telling me how I was indispensable. Then covered hit. And they laid off all my coworkers. They told me I could stay. But for less hours than before and definitely no pay raise. Just more responsibilities. Either working from home. Or in an empty office. I declined the offer and quit right then and there. Felt pretty cheated though. I think the dangling of the carrot is something I would tell most young folks to not follow. Get some experience and a few skills and move on. Companies will always dangle that carrot that the big pay raise is coming soon. Even if they offer it instead of the usual 2-3% call raise, it ends up being 7-8%, which is fine. But likely you'll see much larger increases hopping around early in your career. So glad I took that the pay raise is moving to a new job every 2 years. Seriously not even me looking. Just a random call sometimes from a recruiter. I ask for 20% more of what I'm making. Get 30%. Stupid not to take it. So I always moved. Went from 45k to 75k. That's how you supposed to do it. I've actually managed to find the rare job with the manager. Who actively tries to increase my wage without me even asking. Somehow I've managed to keep my wage sitting slightly above the industry average without the slightest bit of effort on my part. It's nice to get those recruiting emails and see them offering my current pay. However I would recommend pretty much everyone to always be ready to jump to a new job. Just maybe also show your manager the offer and see if they want to match slash beat it. Like most people here, my first job, I was working at a pizza place known for letting you underscore the customer bake the pizzas at home. I was working minimum wage, but I felt like I'd been there a while and wanted to move up. So I talked to my boss about a possible raise. She said she'd keep an eye on my performance over the next month and see if I deserved it. Now, there was another employee there by the name of Jimmy. Jimmy was great if there was a rush, because in those instances, just having an extra pair of hands makes a difference. But in all other aspects of running the store, he was useless. He slacked off and left his work for the rest of us to do. Of course, the manager loved him. After a month of picking up every shift I could and doing every unpleasant task assigned to me, my boss tells me that I've been doing a fantastic job and that I earned my raise. I looked in my check and I was now making an extra zero dollars. 50 slash hours. Not great. But I was 16 at the time, and it felt like the squeaky wheel got the grease, until I find out that Jimmy also got a $0. 50 raise, and everyone else did too. Turns out the minimum wage was increasing nationally, and they were legally obligated to give everyone a raise. When I confronted her about this, she turned the tables on me, telling me that talking about my pay with other employees was unprofessional. She went on vacation shortly after that. I taped my two week notice to her door the day after she left. TL. Doctor, I worked my ass off for a minuscule raise only to find out that the raise was legally required anyways. This is the thing that sucks the most about promotions. Managers promote people that they get along with best, not those who have the best performance. I'm not a social butterfly, but I'm a good project manager. Yet not being a social butterfly is what will hold me back most in life. I'm not socially awkward. I'm just introverted and have a more keep your head down and work mentality when I'm just in much less of a socialize about our weekend on my break type. Close bracket. I was a really bit of a people pleaser when I was younger. Tried to do everything to make life for everyone easier. Turns out that they just took advantage on me. Givers need to know their limits. Because takers don't have any. So true. I need this plastered on my wall. Thanks. I worked 4 years at Awam at almost constantly being praised as one of the best employees on my shift slash team now what kind of reward did I get for this arrays? A promotion? No big at a small pin I was allowed to wear that just said something like management appreciates me. Expecting a lifelong career in the supermarket field. Starting at the bottom as a box boy. Progressing to Clark. Then Sundra's department. Head. Only to have a company sold and not be rehired. A stab in my back. My dad worked for the same company for 33 years as a manager and retired with a full pension. 
he knew the company was going to be sold, but didn't tell me. Another stab in the back. Kroja can eat shit. Why the fuck wouldn't your old man say anything? He had stock in the company and was sworn to secrecy. Company loyalty vs love for his only son. Fuck him. My tenure cut short after 8 years. No pension for me. 1983. Many shorter careers followed. None of those resulted in pensions either. My dad passed in 2006. Three quarters of his estate went to adult stepbrothers and sister who I never met. Worked hard at my first job for an entire year after a zero dollars. 20 raise. Got a zero dollars. 10 raise after that year. While a guy that avoided work got zero dollars. 40. So I avoided working too hard for a year and got a zero dollars. 40 raise. No bullshit. Also passed up a crew leader position to work in an easier area. Then they made me a crew leader anyway in the new area. I didn't even ask. The company I work for now does some ass backward stuff too. It drives me nuts. Progress takes time and there's a fine line between getting stuck because you're too good at something and getting moved on to promote you. Progress takes time and there's a fine line between getting stuck because you're too good at something and getting moved on to promote you. And that is why you change jobs every few years. I'm too specialized and have a cush job right now. So nothing else is appealing. I need to train a couple people to take my place and I can move along to my next stop, which is what I'm looking forward to. Just too bad that it'll take me two years to train a decent replacement. If you really like that job and they're cool. Yeah definitely. If it's just some job and they can't get by, if you just up and left well. Tough shit on their part. Ain't your fault you're that good. When I realized I get paid the same as cowalkers who are putting in bare minimum. Americans are largely captive by an illusory belief that there's something wrong with revealing their salary. In essentially every case, this reduces the information asymmetry which employers exploit to their advantage at employees' expense. Always share your salary freely and openly and ask others this. It's the best way to get more pay and more fair pay for everyone, which only reduces employers' wealth. Currently working for a company that regularly makes mistakes on payroll. If I didn't constantly check in with cowalkers we'd all be underpaid. I've caught mistakes at least 7 different times. Those aren't mistakes. They're just hoping you don't notice. Wage theft is the biggest form of theft in the US. By being taken advantage of repeatedly. Go above and beyond the expectations in hopes to advance. You now have to do that advanced job with way more work for no pay increase and in less time than the people getting paid more than you. Don't ever let an employer know you're capable or willing to do significantly more work than anyone else for the same pay. If an opening arises and you have been consistent, you're more likely to get the position than someone who does twice the work you do for the same pay just because you follow the book more. This thread is a gold mine of career advice. I did something similar and ended up exactly how you described. There wasn't one particular moment for me, but the saying it's better to be lucky than good is oh so true at times. Sure working hard helps, but being at the right place at the right time is often overlooked by those that purely equate hard work with success. Edit, I do believe that working hard can give you more opportunities for luck and success, but it's not guaranteed. Malcolm Gladwell talks about right place right time in outliers. It's fascinating. Also made me realize how much luck there is in succeeding sometimes we do all the work. And it's not at the right place or right time. So we still fail. That book significantly reframed my understand of success too. Again. It talked a lot about how important it is to work hard and to learn. The stories of urban Jewish immigrants from that same book come to mind. It's just that it isn't sufficient. Especially when it comes to astronomical success. In the last 5 years, learned hard work hardly ever pays off. It's about working the system more than anything. The catch is that I suck at working the system. Dude slash lady I'm not an ass kisser at work and hate work politics. I just want to do my best. Get paid. Recognized and given a raise and send me home. I don't care about stupid employee appreciation pizza parties or Christmas parties. Just give me money. It was eye-opening to get my first corporate job supervising in a manufacturing company. 
and realize how much adults act worse than elementary students. And the fact they are being motivated the same way. Pizza parties. Yeah my first job starting at a machine shop I was excited to work with dudes 30 plus and live the life. Come to find out they were the biggest whiners and gossip queens. Yeah the pizza party does nothing for me other than you made us millions off your back here have couple slices of pizza and some pop. Just fucking send me home early on a Friday with pay. Supervisor gossip about lower employees was always entertaining. Had one woman dating two men at once. Who were on different shifts. One of the men worked an over one day. And saw his girlfriend sitting on another man's lap during break. Fist fight broke out. Another time had to move two employees assigned jobs because of a weeks long argument that amounted to I'm not touching you while invading the other's personal space. 